Hi, I'm Susanna Richards. I'm an associate professor of education at Eastern Connecticut State University, and I am delighted to be here today. I am a person who is probably by many people's standards pretty complex, but I have a lot of passions. And as an educator, two of my biggest passions are gifted education and literacy. I had a great opportunity to study with Dr. Joseph S. Renzulli and Dr. Sally Rees at the University of Connecticut where I completed my PhD in gifted education. But when I went to the University of Connecticut after teaching for over 11 years in elementary and middle schools, I also had a really strong passion for literacy. I believe that education is about igniting, delighting, and cultivating. And I have to admit that thanks to Dr. Renzulli in part, I believe that such good education elements always come in threes. So that's why it's igniting, delighting, and cultivating. And so I believe that it's really important for us to provide students with an opportunity where we expose them to lots of things. And maybe that's lots of different great books, or maybe that's museums or experiences. And to me, to ignite a student is to put something on his, her, or their radar. Because how do you know that you could grow up to be a rhinoceros? scientists unless you know that there are rhinoceros scientists and I will admit as a second or third grader I didn't even know that you could be a specific animal scientist I knew you could be a veterinarian and other things like that but I didn't know you could have a very specific specialty so I really believe in igniting and one of the ways that I do a lot of igniting is through the work that I do in literacy and I've been very lucky to be able to highlight books and all kinds of inclusive books for most of the last 15 to 20 years. I'm so lucky to be able to have access to books, but I'm even more lucky that teachers and educators and librarians and parents let me talk to them and highlight different kinds of books. Last night, I was igniting my own knowledge by reading about people that I didn't know as much about as I would like to, like Elijah Cummings and uh, Judith Scott, who was a fabulous um, fiber and artist. But so after you ignite and you put something on somebody's radar, I think it is really I important to delight, to do that in a delightful way. So while I don't believe that all learning should be fun, I believe that there are lots of fabulous approaches you can use using technology, using hands-on items and engaging experiences that will help students to learn content, skills and strategies, but at the same time, do it in a way that is not necessarily overly painful. And so for example, I have a lot of books back here behind me and so many of these books have opportunities to really teach something in a delightful way. Maybe it is a biography about a particular person or maybe it is a story about something you've never known about or maybe the format of the book delivers it in a way. So I like to say to everybody out there, just in case you didn't know, the answer is always yes. Yes to graphic novels. Yes to reading about somebody you don't know who they are. Yes to reading about people who are like you. Yes to reading about people who are not like you. Yes to reading nonfiction. The answer is yes to reading books that are below your reading level or what you can cognitively decode as a reader. And the answer is yes to reading books that are above your level. Those things are always yes. And I think if we take a yes, yes approach, then we can delight in a lot of ways. And a lot of other things come together when we ignite and delight. And one of the things is that we need to cultivate. We really need to cultivate young people today. And there's so many things that we need to cultivate. And as educators, we're not res only responsible for literacy development and numeracy development and, his and hi the development of their history knowledge and their scientific knowledge, but we're also responsible for helping them acquire this skills and strategies they need to be successful. And so I really believe that it's important for us to cultivate 
so that every student has the skills and strategies he, she, or they need in order to become successful. And that means that we have to help them developing their literacy and in particular their reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And it means that we also have to look at the fact that we are teaching the learner, we are not teaching the curriculum. And in teaching the learner, it's super important that we find out a little bit about them and maybe that we assess their interests and that we know what it is that they already know because no student comes to us as a tabula rasa and all students come to us with incredible potential in order to explore, discover, and possibly make a significant difference in the content that they are learning and what they're going to do. I am always amazed at the second grader who sees a problem in his, her, or their community and then goes to help solve that actual problem. I'm also equally amazed at the 62-year-old who pursues a passion after learning about something. For me, everything comes down to so what and what if. That's what drives me as an educator. So what, why does it matter? And what if, why can't I do it a different way? Or what are the ways in which I can do this? And this goes back to my very early years of being a teaching, of, of being a teacher, when I was working with second graders or third graders, or when I was working with sixth graders, teaching them scientific concepts that I was just becoming familiar with myself, but wanted to make sure that they had an opportunity to explore those and put the pieces of the puzzle together in terms of that scientific information. Some people who've known me most of my life would say that I've always been a teacher. And maybe in many ways I have, whether it's teaching sewing um, and providing sewing lessons or asking questions at a dinner table when I'm with a group of friends. I'm always looking at things to see how we can put the pieces of the puzzle together. I want opportunities for everybody. I love museum education, and I really believe that books are a form of mentor that are one of the cheapest and most accessible mentors that kids can have access to. So if children are learning about the world and they are unable or don't have access to museums or theater or travel opportunities, as most children do not, then books are one of the ways that we can put things on their radar. I am so in love with the idea that every child should have access to not one, not two, but hopefully a couple of dozens of books that help them to acquire a passion and interest. And I totally believe that if we are going to take advantage of supporting our greatest resources and our greatest human resources, then we have to do a better job of both identifying and servicing those kids who may be part of what has traditionally been known of kids in gifted and talented programs. And in doing that, my focus in the world of teaching has a lot to do with the combinations of what we do for kids who've been identified and gifted and talented, but also what we do with literacy. I'm constantly interested in putting books and ideas on kids' plates. I love to tell them the secrets of being what Jim Trelease would have referred to as lifetime readers because I worry that we've concentrated so hard on creating school time readers that we have forgotten that our goal is to create lifetime readers. And I will say that I have to attribute my version of that quote to the great Jim Trelease who wrote the Read Aloud Handbook. But even though I believe in the wide variety of books that are out there, and that I want kids to have stories that are told in all different kinds of formats, whether it's a graphic novel or a picture book, I want them to be able to follow Follow to follow fantasies and to fall into stories that mix cooking and identity. I also think it's super important that we as educators recognize that our job revolves around 
the ability to provide and support potential. And that potential can come in so many different ways. So in the work that I do here at Eastern Connecticut State University, I'm kind of a different kind of professor. I don't follow a lot of the bureaucratic rules for which I constantly say I can be fired every day. But what I do do is try to make a contract with my students that says that if you trust me and I get to know you, then I will do my very best to help you be a successful teacher. I'm really delighted because some of the last students that I've worked with over the last couple of years are in regular contact with me and they share the things they are doing. The student teacher from last semester who has a new job as a third grade teacher this year in a district and she had her students draw the flowers that a friend of hers had given her over the weekend and draw and label the parts of the flower. The same student also uses video clips and all kinds of different texts to help kids not only identify the character traits that a character might have in a particular novel, but also to use evidence to support whether those characters actually have and exhibit those traits. I want thinking teachers, teachers who are literate, teachers who love experiences, and teachers who are so incredibly excited to ignite, delight, and cultivate the potential of their students. I want everyone to leave school with the ability to read, with the ability to write, with the ability to listen and speak. And I know that in this country, at this time, under these circumstances, literacy is such an incredible foundation that will really help students to be successful. I not only want kids to read and explore books that they want, I want them to think about them. I want them to argue about them. I want them to make connections across all of them. And I believe that literacy and gifted and talented education are very, very tied. But I also believe that the truth of the matter is that our high level skills and abilities, the places in which we are going to be talented and may lead us to happy, successful, and productive lives are not always based on what my former doctoral advisor, Joe Renzulli, would say, schoolhouse learning. I believe there's all kinds of other learning that can happen. And whether it's being a potter or being a car mechanic or a poet or being a copy editor, there are so many different ways that you can contribute and have a happy and successful life. But all in all, I really wish that in 2021, that I could say to an audience of anyone who wants to be a teacher or who has ever had a teacher who have influenced him, him, her, or themselves, that the truth of the matter is that the role of that teacher is to set you on a path, but you have to see where that path will take you. One of my favorite quotes that I created a long time ago is, the book is not the destination, it is the vehicle to a destination unknown. And you can substitute lots of different things for that word book or that item book. It could be a museum experience. It could be a cooking experience that you've had. But the truth is that an item, an experience, a connection is really not that destination. It is the vehicle to a destination unknown, and you can take and do with it what you want. And I am just so delighted to be able to share my passion and my um, small amount of knowledge in a way that I hope will someday, currently and or in the future, ignite delight and cultivate educators across the world.